I interned at the state house because I was kind of into politics mm -hmm. and like, you know, I, I, I interned for the majority whip of the Maryland House of Delegates uh, in this must have been 2010, something like that. And uh, yeah, just got nothing out of it. Just hid. It's a huge building. I would just yeah. be like, oh, I'm going to a hearing to take notes. And I would just be like in the fucking library doing homework for another, you know, some, yeah. some paper that was due, just getting nothing out of the experience, trying to force myself to be in like a regular relationship with a really nice woman. Who another, wanted, like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> who I liked, but as soon as that like initial, it's cool that a girl cares about you, yeah. where it wore off, I was like, oh, she wants to get married like next year. And yeah. I could see my future of like, I'm going to be a fucking dirtbag for at least a decade. This isn't going to work well, out. Okay. Did Was it a dirtbag or was it just, because I, I can relate, I think most people can probably relate to the idea of like trying to do the right life. Yeah. And then at a certain point, like I know personally, I would look at relationships and be like, look at my friend's relationships and be like, I'm not, I would rebel hard mm, against this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but because I knew I wouldn't be able to, it wasn't, I wasn't going to cheat. I wasn't, right. I would just be fucking mad all right, the time. Right, right, right. What were you afraid you would be? Sometimes I wonder if I've even gotten far enough to know. Like I've only been in two serious relationships and like three more kind of like weird quasi relationships yeah. and just a lot of just like very casual dating yeah and not even, not even have to be a relationship like you were afraid like i know i work at the state house oh oh i see i see yeah like what were you afraid that what would the right line and like i guess i was just afraid that i was going to hate my life the as much as my father did yeah i guess i was afraid i was going to be the guy who tells his son like hey my life sucks fucking dick. I'm in hell over here. And it's like, you better have a good time because yeah. I've sacrificed myself for you. And it's interesting. I've really gone full the up, uh, other way because of that. I mean, I think there's no way to look at my upbringing other than that. I mean, my brothers, I have another brother who went, I felt like I rebelled against my dad by never wanting to be tied down to anything. Never... Like, I have no responsibilities to yeah. anyone personally. I don't. Yeah. Um, and that was always his thing. He complained about how he had to do this. He had to, like, he was- it's he's so a, weird he's when people good, will complain about a choice that they I made. Know, I know, I know. I, it's like, it's it's so human, <laughs> yeah, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what did you think? And like, to me, complain to your fucking friends. <laughs> Why? I'm trying to fucking beat Super Mario too. I don't want to hear about how you're going to kill yourself because you're not in Athens anymore. You know, like it was, it was, it was brutal, honestly, but I think there's no read on, I mean, that's just I like so that clearly. Athens, so it sounds like a 4,000 year old problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to be, you want to be <laughs> in the I marketplace in Athens, Athens. selling goat cheese. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah, I don't know. I just went so far where it was like, Anytime I'm in any relationship, I get scared that this person is going to depend on me too much. And I'm going to be that. And I would, even when things were good, I would just feel this like deep anxiety that I'm going to just, you know, that that's just too much pressure. I had the thought, nothing is ever as bad as you make it out to be. And then I was going to ask you, what was as bad as you thought it would be in life? Stand up bombing is as bad as I thought it would be. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Bombing You're lives right. up. My divorce doesn't. I remember a cozy, snowed in feeling. I write about it in my book. My wife left me when I was 28 years old, which means I got married way too early. I was 22. Right. Yeah. She has an affair. She breaks my heart. She leaves. I remember this isn't just hindsight. I swear to you, this is the underreported thing in the heartbroken. Mulaney, actually, we were even closer at the time. And I remember he was like, there's music for breakups. You listen to Radiohead. You listen to Elliot Smith. Yeah. You walk around. You see the sadness everywhere. And and now I'm leaving Melania behind, but it's like there's a snowed in quality. In the line I use in my book, it's like you're wearing the, the lead coat they give you at the dentist mm -hmm. when they give you x-rays. But at least you know what to do. Does that make sense? Life is kind of clear. Oh, that there, I mean, sad. there's a syllabus. Yeah. Yeah. Be sad. Yeah. You're going to eat. You're going to drink. You're going to like yeah. see depression everywhere. Here's a Mulaney quote from that time. I remember he, we shared an office at the time and he was like, you know, go the, break the script, have a party, like have everyone over your house. I was like, I remember being like so bloated and like weary. And I was like, really? He was like, yeah. And I was like, 
well, I, you know, the, the guy I'm renting the place for me has a cat, but I guess I could. And Melania goes, oh, you have a cat? I can't come. And he wasn't joking. It's great. And that's depression. Depression is like you're so sensitive. Yeah. I remember I went to the UCB and this guy Streeter, he, he's a comedian. Streeter Seidel. Streeter Seidel. He right. He's a big writer at SNL. Now. Yeah, exactly. He came up to me and, I, and he, was, I, he goes, hey, man. I go, hey, he didn't know my wife had just left me. I go, how are you? He goes, pretty good. Just fucking your wife. <laughs> like, like everything is so sensitive and it just keeps coming. That what did he and he just he said didn't it know as a he joke. was just fucking breaking my balls. That's a normal yeah comedian it's a normal thing, to thing say. that people say. To me. It's not. It's a normal comedian thing to say. Yeah, yeah. But like, anyway, what I'm saying is, bombing is the only thing that when it happened, and I I don't mean I bomb on a different scale now. If I bomb, yeah, but it's, it's still, just different. It's not like you're worried the building is going to collapse. No, it's so tenuous and fucked and you're just in emotional free fall yeah so divorce wasn't as bad as i thought it was don't get me wrong there were moments i remember being at a sushi bar and you're you're crushed yeah but you know was, how to be did, crushed and you, you can okay be so and <laughs> you just be crushed right but and you didn't you weren't worried about being stuck you weren't worried about like i'm this is terminal no because the great great gift of my divorce was I knew that being married and I don't feel this way across the board it was going to slow me down <laughs> like at that point in my life um, I oh, was career wise yeah. you knew that yeah, it was yeah, yeah. not going to be great for your career I knew if I got SNL well, it could have been okay if you had been a bad if you chose to be a bad husband that's or right. Chose to be like a bad partner, and I wasn't going to do that. the 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 toll of that would would have been too big. That's one of my baggage is being like, don't be bad husband, be good husband, be good boy. That's a good. That's a good block. That's that is a, big a good block. block. It is a big block. Tell me about your wife, your relationship with your wife, and how it's different than the other ones you've had. I mean, you don't not without without insulting your wife in any way, or divulging anything. No, I, I mean about. Okay, listen, there's baseline things that I think that you need in a relationship. Like you need just to think that person's absolutely stunningly beautiful. Like all yeah. these things are, yes, of course. But it, the difference really came is like, do I want to share with this person? Maybe or? that's why I'm single because no one thinks I'm beautiful. Oh, no, I didn't show. say they have to think we're beautiful. Oh, yeah, I yeah, can, got confused. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> they just got like your blocks now. Oh, oh. <laughs> you got to leave with the blocks. <laughs> yeah, I did. Now I do. <laughs> but, but yeah, I just, I just love sharing with her. And I loved when she shared. Like, I, I really liked her opinions about things. I like that. Yeah, I like, I like her drive. I like her focus. Well, like, that's the funny thing about male female relationships is women spend a lot of time on their looks, and it's important but not after the second date. We know what you look like. Yeah, yeah. Like literally, yeah. it comes down to like, hey, if I hit the ball over there, yeah. you're going to hit it back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't care if you are, that, if you if your eyeliner's perfect. Yeah. I don't yeah. give a fuck. Yeah. We got to sit here yeah. and talk for 60 years. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, look good, please. You got to be hot. You gotta be hot. No, I know this is, you gotta be, because I think there, there's a, some, this girl did this fucking hilarious thing on, there's this, uh, uh, she did a, a thing about guys on podcasts talking about settling down mm -hmm. and she put this like fake beard on and she's just like, yo, you know what? Like, and she's doing the, the guy accent. She's like, you know what? It's like, my wife ain't the hottest, but you know, I realized that like, we got a lot in common. You know what I mean? And like, and she just keeps on doing this rant and you look at podcasts and there are a lot of guys that go on. It was just like, I just found one that like, she could lift things too. And it's like, when you, so when you have a ranch, you know what I mean? You need to lift <laughs> you a lot. Thing. Yeah. 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 Heavy <laughs> shit. Yeah, exactly. No beauty. Of course. Like, but most people are not beautiful. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's hard. You got to so, find a beautiful one. No, but that hasn't not, been with Leo. That's tricky. It's not possible. It's, it's not, not gonna. It's not gonna happen. I might need to you got to go to wife. Europe or the Far East. He goes to Israel. You're he right. got the first draft pick. He's there before Nick That's, Saban. I said to you, I think that if you're a hot woman, you have to check in with Leo. Oh, for sure. Like, hello, I'm hot. Yeah. People said I had to come. He's to me. immigration. You're, he's Ellis Island. <laughs> <laughs> they need to make another island. Yeah, he's Ellis Island for for the hottest women on earth. That's funny. Um, the um, <laughs> your grandmother passed through here. Yeah, in, in two thousand twenty three, yes, she was great. Um, okay, <laughs> do you? Okay, so the time that we spend together, do we want to hang out? Do we want to talk? Do we have fun? Do I love making her happy? I yes. Like this sounds like almost like some simp shit, but I don't care. It's like it is a real joy for me 
to make her happy. And I think that's important. Yeah. Like I, that is, yes. if you're doing it kind of like reluctantly because you got to keep this thing going, like, but if actually making that person happy makes you feel great, that's a sustainable thing. Did you feel that way with every woman you dated? Because I, because I, I had a thing one time where a woman was like, I want you to court me and I want to go places. And I was like, it's kind of not what I do. I can yeah. get the tickets. I can do the thing. I'll go to the zoo. You think yeah. I've never been to a zoo? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I scream free them because I'm vegan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I go and I protest. Uh, and somebody's like, well, maybe it's you didn't want to do it. For it's like, I don't do it. So the idea of making someone else happy in ways that make me unhappy or make me kind of feel shut down. Yeah. Or like I'm on duty. Yeah. Like can't I'm, be that. Yeah. You got to have the mutual things. Yeah. You know, and like, it doesn't have to be your first passion, you know, but like, like for example, my wife is a big foodie. She loves going to restaurants and she loves eating like great food. It just so happens that great food tastes delicious hmm. and I can get on board with that. Yeah. I grew up going to diners my whole life. I'm a diner but kid. But now you go, now that you go to nice restaurants, I takes a long time. Can, to get I, the can food? we say that? To get can the food? we say that like it's a bit of an ordeal? It better be, Neil. It, Neil, it better be a fucking ordeal. For these prices, I need the ordeal. Don't have the burger ready. I need uh, bring don't, some. I, you don't want something dipped in hot water? No. <laughs> <laughs> and thrown out on your plate. No, you don't no, want to just no. flash fried and fucking fucking gone. Yeah. Well, but I dated a woman whose brother was a chef and so we go to and it's like uh chefs with compliments yeah. to the point where you're full yeah before the actual food gets there and yeah. you're like could you have can we take some of the shit i bought off the bill yeah because <laughs> yeah. i didn't eat it yeah. yeah yeah uh do you find that's that was the only downside of like the yeah. foodie world yeah to me yeah and you don't mind that no like i i yeah i I like eating the good food. It's cool. Like I'm in a place where we can afford it. And it's not like a stress. Right. And then it makes her really happy and she's really into it. And she likes kind of like discovering the spot. She likes, yeah. you know, it doesn't have to be some bougie spot. It's just got to be a place that has really great food and she goes and does it. So we like that. We travel well together. Like that's the other thing. She will plan everything. I won't. Like, I'm not yeah. going to Google a million different things. Like, I'm not going to find out where we're going to stay. So we really kind of like lock in in a lot of ways. Yeah. And that, I think, is something you start to recognize almost like organically in the beginning. And then as you reflect on it, like your marriage, you're like, wow, like this is a great companion to travel with because all the things I do not want to do, she gets anxiety if it's not done. Right. Like, I, I almost have to be I, like, I, I, one too, thing a day. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm with you. Or I it will be... If I do more than one, and then it becomes like, we got to be on the boat yeah, yeah, yeah. by 345 no, no, and they, yeah, and you're stressed. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. two thoughts. One of them, does she ever get a hotel room where you're like, Whew, okay, that's a little steep. <sighs> yeah, probably. Do you yeah. voice it? Or you Not eat really. That? Like I kind of like hold on to it in case I need to like point out something. Later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, I good. use it Collect for like passive yeah, aggressive yeah, yeah, purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, a, yeah, yeah, like yeah. a, like a. Someone's got to pay for the Amangiri. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like you know, someone's got to pay for these trips yeah. to Colombia. Yeah, you like you weren't saying that when we was on that fucking uh, <laughs> private shuttle. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Where's the same energy from yeah. the through the very yeah. dangerous yeah. neighborhood? Yeah. <laughs> you weren't yelling that when we got the, when I got the bulletproof Mercedes to get from the fucking Egyptian airport. <laughs> very important. In Morocco. It's very important. Um, somebody, a friend of mine, recently is in a relationship, and she said that they got her car got broken into that's a good test like traveling's a test for a relationship yeah. but if you fake a break-in you could see you know what i mean oh he broke he, into uh, no so a girl a girl's car got broken into when oh. she was her boyfriend was visiting all their shit got and she said it was like a good test but i was thinking it'd be a good it could be like a business mm. where we fake crimes and see how they react couples yes and then how'd she react she said they both were great they both mm. handled it very well. And she's like, it was a good sign that they we can handle were, chaos well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or a setback, or uh, yeah. because you kind of become a uh, uh, Voltron. Well, that, that does happen in a relationship, and I love that. Like, right. You become like a you're a yeah. thing. This this fucking idea. Like, don't get me wrong. I love independence. Obviously, everything we're doing is independent. But like, it's independent with a group. 
you know, and I yeah. think that with relationships, codependency is good. I, I think that we we have this like Western idea that like it should be the sole individual journey. You're the fucking hero, and it's like no. If you're building a family with somebody, that becomes the group, and there are things that you guys do together for one another. You have roles, and you support one another in those roles. You learn how to fucking communicate with one another, and that's not easy. It is, and you learn the things you do that drive people fucking crazy like I, I would do this thing <laughs> that would drive my wife crazy the second we started to like get into a tiff i would go oh so you want to ruin a night <laughs> like <laughs> now in my mind I, in my mind i'm thinking i'm thinking you um, just checkmated her bro but in my mind i'm going i'm going i don't want to ruin a night you must be one I'm, no i'm just saying there's two of us here and one I of us know don't want to ruin me night. Yeah. that I don't want that. So that only leaves one conclusion. Seems like it's <laughs> you. Right. And then what I learned is that that's the worst thing to say ever. Because it's well, just putting it all the blame. It validates, yes. Yeah. It's just putting all the blame on that person. It's basically calling. It's the equivalent of calling someone racist. Yeah. Yeah. In a relationship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. you once you call them right. You yeah. can't go like uh, not only am i not racist yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you, like she can't argue out you're how racist hey did you like that did you like that yeah did you like it though you want more don't want to work would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people first of all go up here to subscribe and then go up here to uh watch more clips this is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in a little i'm not really used to the green screen